Today we'll be painting a little bee gathering honey from a cherry blossom. This is Cheryl, the artist of Animal Art by Terracotta, and I will be posting the colors below. But the colors are warm pinks, reds, yellows, golds, and some creams with touches of blue. As you can see, I've already prepared my background, but I'm adding a little bit of texturing using those colors that I just mentioned. I will post the colors below. So now that my canvas has been textured, it's time to put in the petals. I do this by painting each of the petals individually on the canvas itself. I am mixing a little bit on the palette, but I do a lot of blending and mixing on the canvas because in nature, each petal is very unique. It has a different kind of shadow or blend, and I want that to be unique also in this particular painting. So to distinguish each petal one from another, I am actually putting one side that has a little bit of pink edging or red edging, and then the other side will have white, and that's supposed to be where it reflects the light. I'm not really sure on each of these petals. I'm constantly readjusting because as the intensity or the value changes on one petal, I have to adjust it on the other petals. And you'll see me put multiple layers on these petals just as I'm trying to find out what looks great and what doesn't. I do have a reference picture, but because I've changed the background, it's also changed the lighting a lot. And so I need to make my picture rather unique based on the lighting of my own composition. To create the color for those stems and buds, I'm using the Carmen and the Pearl Orange, which is part of my regular palette, and I only added cobalt blue, just a little bit. And just that cobalt blue is enough to darken the colors. And all of the colors are very harmonious because I haven't really added anything except the cobalt. I will again apply different layers of cobalt and different intensities. But right now I'm putting down the form of the buds and the stems, just like I did for the petals. Once I have the form and the shape down, then I can start getting the intensity and the values and the color right. Here I'm again adjusting the petals, adding a little bit more white, putting a little bit of glow in the center part because that's where the stamens are going to come out of and they need some whiteness to contrast the darkness or the, the redness of the stamens. And to tame down that bright Carmen, I'm using two whites. The first white is the traditional titanium white. It's really good for mixing with other colors to put contrast next to the reds or even against that cobalt blue mixture. The titanium white is great for mixing. It's also great for the center of the flower. The other white is very unique. It's a pearl white. It's very shimmery. It throws back the light. I have to use that one in moderation because otherwise it's a little bit overpowering. It's very translucent, and it also reflects the light a lot. And so if you put too much on the surface of the canvas and it's reflecting all the light, then you lose the depth of your other colors. So I put it in choice spots, hoping that it will add to the shimmer, maybe a bokeh effect, a very subtle bokeh effect because I'm not doing it in circles. Anyway, I think that it adds to the magic of this bee and flower picture. Right now I'm putting just the suggestions of where I think that B should be. And I'm going to be using three colors for the B, three colors of yellow. I will use yellow ochre, pearl orange, and just a regular yellow. And usually the pearl orange and the yellow ochre are my base colors. As I build up those colors, I will pop the colors finally with a touch of yellow at the very top just to bring out the 3D effect. And around the bee, I'm heightening the colors. The pinks, I'm intensifying just a little bit so that the bee will pop forward. And around the head, I'm making it more white, the background. And so that when I put the dark head in, the head will pop against the whiteness. You will notice that I maintained a lot of white above the back of the bee. That's because when I painted the lines of the wings, the darker lines of the wings and the white will contrast 
and that will give the bee kind of an elevation and hopefully help it to fly off of the canvas. I'm also deepening the colors of the bee before I paint in those wings. I want there to be more contrast against the pinks and the whites and the background itself. The bee is more or less the focal point of this painting, and so I need to have more depth and darkness and more contrast there. At no time so far have I used any kind of black in this. But now I've arrived at the point where I will just use a touch of black. I probably will only use black for two or three strokes of pure black. Otherwise, I'm mixing a little bit of cobalt just so it will have a little bit of color and it won't be a flat black. Black by itself is only for maybe one or two or three final strokes in a couple of areas. But other than that, I do mix black with others, with other colors, in order to get a darker color, but I don't want the black to be, to be flat. During this entire painting, I have used only three brushes. One is an Artmate Zero, it's a round. Another is the Artmate 2 round, and then probably a quarter inch or something smaller than the half inch flat brush. And the flat brush is really good for getting the petals, getting them square, and to get sharp defining edges. The canvas is only three and three quarters square, and so I've had a really difficult time getting the fine little hairs of the bee. And so finally I succumb to using a couple of pens. I'm using a white gel pen, which means that my artwork is no longer archival. And I did a few strokes with the Navy Statler watercolor pen, which means that I'm going to have to hit this canvas with a fixative afterwards. The watercolors will bleed terribly if I put a gloss directly on. And to preserve my painting, I do want to put some kind of gloss on. So to do that, you hit it lightly with a fixative first very lightly. Let that kind of settle. Hit it again with another fixative, maybe two more times, and then you can put on a gloss and you shouldn't have any kind of bleeding of those watercolor, of the watercolor or the gel pen. An alternative could be to use the Micron 2 or the Micron or another size of Micron, and that wouldn't be navy, but it would also add that little bit of hair texture that I needed for the bee. I think a really valuable color tip on painting this or any kind of a painting is to take your colors and kind of blend them together. So all of my pinks have been blends of the oranges and yellows and reds and even the yellow of the bee has a little bit of the pink in it. The blues also have the pink in it and so that's why these colors seem to harmonize quite well. They are just merging and blending among themselves. So now we enter the final moments of the painting where the stamens are put in and the final touches are made. I slowed the video down to put in those stamens just to show that painting really is a reflective process. Most of this video is 600 times the regular speed, which is pretty fast. And now I'm just putting a little bit more of a darkened edge along the petals and the stems and those cute little buds. This kind of puts a smoothness down, a little bit of a darkening area. And you'll notice that throughout the video that I've only put this dark edging on one side. And as you look at it, it's on the left side. I've never put that dark edging on the right just because I don't want darkness on both sides. I don't want that contrast there. Always remember to do your sides too. It kind of makes your painting look complete, especially because this is a canvas. And then the final touches of kind of this deep red maroon on the bee, my final little pen twirl, and I am done. I really hope you enjoyed this, and if you would like to see more, please come back for more tutorials on how to do animal painting.